Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 10th of May and this quick preview of the week beginning the 13th of May and contrast the performance this week of equity markets in general um, to the optimism that we saw at the end of last week and the very good US payrolls numbers we've seen a little bit of reality um, creep in uh, concerns about Chinese tariffs, the increase in Chinese tariffs on the back of Donald Trump claiming that uh, Chinese officials have broken the deal. Seen big declines in US markets, European markets in general. And I think it's raising the question as to whether or not in the short term we may well have seen the peaks. Well, let's have a look at some of the charts. Obviously we can see the S&P 500 is flirting with the 50-day moving average. We've seen a very sharp down move um, over the course of the past few days. We've gapped lower from the peaks that we saw at the end of last week. We made a marginal new high on the S&P 500 but we weren't able to sustain those gains and we've slipped back below 2,900. So I think the big question is, where do we go to from here? Well, certainly I think the narrative has, slif- has, has shifted ever so slightly. And if we look at the Dow Jones, while the S&P 500 did make brand new highs, all-time highs, last week, it was interesting to note that the Dow Jones did not. We haven't been able to take out the twin set of peaks in and around uh, just above the 20 just above the 26,000 level we can draw a horizontal line all the way through these peaks here and we can see that there is a significant area of resistance on the US 30 or the Dow Jones look at the German uh, market the the DAX we've seen a lot of choppiness over the course of the past two or three days we've managed thus far to maintain um, maintain momentum above 12,000. We've had little spikes below it, but we haven't as yet been able to um, push significantly below it. But I think what we can say is that while we've seen a rebound um, over the course of the past few hours, I think the big question is now that these new tariffs have kicked in, is whether or not they will actually be implemented. There is now a two-week grace period because any new tariffs will not be applied to goods that are currently in transit. So any goods that left Chinese ports prior to midnight Eastern time today will not be subject to tariffs when they arrive. Any goods that leave Chinese ports after after today and arrive in, say, one to two weeks' time will be subject to tariffs. So there is still time in the calendar to avert these increased tariffs. Another thing that's quite notable this week has obviously been the ramping up of the stakes with respect to Iran and the US's approach to Iran. New sanctions have been applied to Iranian exports of industrial metals and the USS Abraham Lincoln carrier group has sailed into the Suez Canal. So that could actually prompt an oil shock if we get a deterioration in conditions there. Also in the coming week we've got the prospect of a decision for the US on EU imported cars Uh, and that could well be a decision that could weigh on risk appetite going forward. So I think the trade story is going to be a continue to be a headwind for investors to navigate a round as well as obviously um, further discussions with respect to the EU summit coming up on the 16th of May in the coming week um, in Brussels, which is likely to be a low-key affair heading into the European elections, which are due on the 23rd of May, and which I will probably cover in more detail next week. Um, but the key, the key, the key items on the calendar for the coming week are as follows, and we can see that from um, the way the pound has performed over the course of the past week or so. It's pretty much continuing to trade in the range with a slight downward bias. We've had some decent economic data out of the UK economy this morning. GDP 0.5% for the first quarter. And actually business investment showed a significant pickup in the first quarter, up 0.5%, um, which confounded expectations of a 0.7% decline. That being said, 
the Brexit uncertainty is likely to continue to weigh on business investment going forward. Certainly not going to weigh on the wages and unemployment data which is due out on the 14th of May. Wages numbers still look likely to remain fairly robust at around about 3.3% and the unemployment rate is expected to remain at 3.9%. As far as the charts are concerned, uh, the cable rate is currently flirting with the 200-day moving average, which is currently acting as a fairly decent area of support at around about 129.60, 129.50. Um, if we do break below there, then obviously the, the, the lows that we saw in April are likely to come into play in and around uh, this 128.60 level in the short to medium term. The oscillator is starting to turn over, so we could well see a little bit of a roll over there. But we're still in the range, and I see no reason to see any I see no reason as to why we should break out of that range. We've also got some additional China data out uh, this week. Now China does have um, the ability to react to the US sanctions, the, the US tariffs rather, that have been increased in the past 24 hours. And I think one thing about the Chinese economy that last week's trade numbers or this week's trade numbers told us was they have underscored the fact that the Chinese economy continues to face challenges with respect to weak domestic demand. The US is going to continue to keep up the pressure on the trade front and this week's April retail sales and industrial production numbers need to be able to maintain the rebound that we saw in March. Now these numbers are out on the 15th of May and industrial production in particular saw a strong rebound in March from 53 to 8.5%. The April numbers I think really need to consolidate this move to the 8.5% which was a four and a half year high for an industrial production so there was significant evidence of a strong rebound there though this might have been a result of some catch up after the Lunar New Year holiday which prompted a little bit of restocking. So I think we could well see April activity slip back a touch. I'll be particularly interested to see how retail sales perform given the improvement that we saw in March um, which saw them rise to a six month high. We've also got US retail sales for April and that's due out on the 15th as well the same day as the China data. On the earnings front it's going to be a very very big week as well. You may have noticed that um, I've got a few IPOs up there. Obviously we've got Uber Technologies out later today and um, it'll be very interesting to see where they finally trade at once they start to price on the New York Stock Exchange. Initial pricing is coming at $45 a share which assigns it a valuation of around about $80 billion. Now I'm highly sceptical about the valuations of some of these com these these um, these companies, um, I think they're incredibly overvalued. I wrote a piece earlier this week about investors potentially losing the plot when it comes to IPOs, and you can read about that on the news and analysis section of the website. I certainly think there's potential for further downside in Lyft's uh, share price. We can certainly see that in the context of the price move that we've seen here. We've got first quarter earnings coming out on the 16th of May for Pinterest, which I think by and large has, fairly, has had a fairly decent um, performance in the wake of its IPO. It certainly surged out of the blocks, gone quite a bit higher, but like most of these unicorns, it's still to make a profit. Its losses are reducing. They came down from 182 million dollars in 2016 to 63 million dollars last year. Revenues are around about 750 million dollars. But if you look at the valuations, we are talking multi-billion dollar valuations. And to sort of put that in context, we've got Beyond Meat, the vegan burger producer. Their valuation is in the region of um, 4.3 billion dollars on turnover of 87 million dollars. So you've got a 4.3 billion dollar valuation on turnover of just short of 88 million dollars and losses of 28 million dollars. So if this if that isn't an accident waiting to happen, I don't know what is. Um, having said that, the share prices has the share price has come off from the highs that we saw earlier this week. It IPO'd at $25. It's been as high as $85. It's now around $68. But if 
equity markets continue their downward thrust that we've seen over the course of the past few days, then I think investors will start to look an awful lot more closely at some of the valuations of these IPOs. So Uber will be closely watched. I'll be keeping a very close eye on that when it prices later today and over the course of the next few days. I'll also be looking very closely at Lyft and Beyond Meat because I certainly think there's potential for further downside in those. We've also got some big earnings out in the coming week. We've got the first quarter earnings for Walmart on the 16th, which is one of the few US retailers that's actually being able to take the fight to Amazon. Recent retail sales figures have shown the company has continued to outperform its peers and the US consumer does appear to continue to um, be able to spend money. Now, the acquisition of Flipkart may well weigh on its numbers, but ultimately I think um, Walmart has been one of the few US retailers that's actually been doing fairly well. We've also got earnings numbers out from Vodafone, full year earnings for 19 out on the 14th of May, Burberry Group full year earnings on the 16th and Thomas Cook first half earnings um, also due out on the 16th. So big week for earnings, big risk in terms of further downside moves in global equity markets, but we are approaching some very key support levels. So I think in the context of the FTSE 100, keep a very close eye on these highs, these, 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 this key support level, the 200 day moving average around about 71.95, these lows around about 71.80. If we break below there, we could well see further declines, but for the moment, there could be a little bit of bargain hunting coming in around these sorts of low levels. Um, and the same applies to the German DAX. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for listening. Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.